You are now listening to the Full Sport Press Podcast, featuring hosts Jay Ho, Wheezy, Jeff, and Coach Locke. Please enjoy the show. What's, What's going on, guys? guys? How's it going, sir? Doing great, man. How are you, Jeff? Wonderful, man. Wonderful one. Coach. Back with another one. You back? You back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you got one for Jeff? I got nah. one. You got one? Okay. Young, young Vaxel Rose. Mm. Right, Vaxel nah. Rose. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I like that. Vaxel Rose. Vaxel Rose. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Like okay. that one? Okay. I'm cool with yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. That. Cameraman, how you doing, brother? All right, two thumbs up, and I had some there. We'll wait it out. <laughs> yeah, so. Yo. yeah uh, Weezy's out on assignment, so yes, we'll sir. talk about that once we get started. You guys ready to get going? Let's, Let's do it. do it. Somewhat. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I would like to welcome everybody back and some of you for the first time to the full Sport Press Podcast. The premier sports podcast for the consummate sports fan. And this is your one stop shop for all sports related news and topics. I'm Jay Hope. It's your boy, Big Jeff. Weezy's out on assignment. Hmm. Holler hmm. at you, Weezy. Share things well. Be Shout back soon. Come back back in the building. Same as some can. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? How y'all boys doing? Hey, man. We're here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cameraman, how you feeling, brother? It's two of them. Two, two thumbs. thumbs. Two yeah, thumbs. Sure. Good pie. Sure. Two thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, sir? Hawks moved on. I, mm. Hey. Mm, stay low. You, you got to keep fine. Gotta, <laughs> that's it. That's all you can do. <laughs> Episode 374, man. We're analyzing the 2021 NBA Conference Finals. FSP style. Always FSP style. You better damn know it. And you better damn believe it. Let's kick it off. Best of the week. What you got, Jeff? I got three of them today. We'll start it off. You said three? The real trifecta. You told me to go from left to right. You know, my bad. Man, the, the, real, the real trifecta. Let's do it. Damn. Mom's birthday. Oh, shout out yeah. to mom. Shout out to mom. I know you're listening. Shout out to mom. Yeah. LeVar Ball. He told us so. Prophecy. He had the prophecy fulfilled. One mm-hmm. for three. Mm-hmm. He had two for three. One mm-hmm. for three. He got two starting point guards in the league, Jay. No rookie of the year for the first one. But, but he got two starting point guards that's, in the league. Hey, that's I, a big I, deal. And hey. the one boy had a contract. So, so does the holiday. That's true. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they but their father wasn't out. Three started. <laughs> okay, go ahead. My just, bad. My I'm bad. just saying. I'm not knocking LeVar. Go ahead. And it's a big fight weekend. Oh, it is. Yeah. Big fight weekend. Yeah. It is. Got Lomachenko versus Nakatani on ESPN Plus. It's quiet. Got that. That's a good first big fight. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Got Tank Davis versus Mario Barrios. My super boy. featherweight on paper. My boy. And the main event, Big Soldier. Big Draco. Oh, I forgot about Big Draco tomorrow. <laughs> versus Bow Wow. Oh my God. That's, verse, tomorrow. that's tomorrow. It's definitely tomorrow. That's the pre. That's the that's co- that's leading into the fight. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. That's the, that's the, that's Draco hey. holding up the McDonald's stuff. I forgot <laughs> yeah. about Big Draco. Yeah. <laughs> what you Red, got, Co? It's gonna set us back a couple of years. You know that, right? Oh, yes, he is. Worst hey, versus it is oh, going to be. <laughs> Never mind. I was about to say. So. Yeah. I, know I know what you're about to say too. It's gonna be all of that. It's gonna be worth the price of admission. That's for damn sure. My goodness, I gotta watch that. Right. What you got, Coach? Man, my, my best of the week is I have officially become the assistant high school basketball coach at Nimitz High School in Houston. Top assistant, man. So shout out to Nimitz High School, man. Studio yeah. big. You hear the air in there? Yeah. 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 Shout yeah. out to you, though, yeah. coach. Appreciate that. Appreciate yes, that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Big yeah, things sure. coming. Big yes, things coming. Yes, sir. Oh, most definitely, man. That's a, for real, man. Congratulations. Appreciate Probably that. Nice Appreciate that. Big deal, for sure. My best of the week is Steph Curry, man. And Steph Curry is a three-star recruit as a high school senior. Uh, he's the most influential basketball player for an entire generation. <laughs> he's a three-star recruit. Uh, <laughs> he's the best shooter ever. He's a three-star recruit. Uh, he's two-time MVP. Three-star. One-time unanimous. Uh, high school senior. He's a three-star recruit. Yep. <laughs> and he's NBA champion three times, man. Three-star recruit. Three-star recruit. Yeah, for sure. He is having a camp, the 2021 underrated tour for three-star mm. athletes in Washington, D.C., on the 31st of July and August 1st, man. So, shout-out to you, I like this, Wardell, man. Stephen Curry, man. Hold down yeah. the three stars. That's, that's dope. For different. That's I dope, like man. that. Yeah, that's I dope, like man. that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, worst of the week, Jeff, what you got? Yeah, fresh off a three and six season, my Florida State Seminoles mm-hmm. have the tenth hardest schedule in the country. That's rough. Oh, the projects we're gonna be there for. Oh wow. man, Project <laughs> Living. Oh, we gonna be there for Lord, Project first. Living. We, we, we comfortable. Project Living. We, we, we comfortable. Tenth hardest schedule off a three Let's and six see. season. Project Living. We are comfortable. Man. <laughs> We're very comfortable in the projects yeah, right sure. now. And I don't like it. Yeah, for sure. Section that's, 8 that's living. Tough. Section 8 living. Yeah. My bad. Everybody My bad. Needs yeah. That's poverty. Yeah. Strict. Yeah, that's that's, that's just. I, yeah, for sure. Yeah, hey, we shall overcome, though. We've been there. Nah, not like this. We've been there. Nah, yeah, they've been, been there. I mean, y'all been there. Yeah, we've been there. Yeah, we we, we, we really three games one year. Nobody really expects y'all to do much. 
Not the Gators. Shots. <laughs> in, in, in Florida hey, hey, hierarchy, hey, it's man. us. It was her, maybe the Hurricanes, then us. Then Miami won championships in 2001. Wait, 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 you we won one in 2006, 2008. Y'all won one in 2014. So we have the most recent championships. Oh, uh, here he go. <laughs> With that S on there. Right. right. Here you go. I guess, never mind. I ain't going to yep. go there. Worst I went of there. the week, coach. What's what you got? There? My worst of the week, man, is oh, that shit. this is going to be the last time I'm in the studio for a while. For a while. Wow. It's for a while. It's for a while, for a while. man. But for a while. Yeah. A little while. A little Not while. A long while. Yeah. No. Nah, but a little but, while. You know, it's, just, it's home. Yeah. True. You know, it's home. And it feels like home. Damn right. Shout out to D-Black. D-Black know what I'm talking about. Speaking of D-Black, man, that's a great segue, man. I've been doing this pod shit for a while. Worst of the week is shout out to my guy, D-Black. We, mm. He called me, right? Yeah. Mm-mm. He was like, hey. When was the last time you listened to Michael Jackson, Jan Jackson scream? <laughs> I said, damn, Black, you know, it's been a while, fam. He was like, hey, man, listen to that second chorus when they go, stop pressuring me. <laughs> yeah. Stop pressuring me. And the yeah. last one he mm-hmm. says, yeah. stop in with me. Yes. I did not know he said that. How? How did he you not know that? He got on TV, too, didn't he? Dude. I, nah, they bleep it out on TV. Know that? They bleep it out on TV. I knew that. You knew that? Yes. They bleep it out on the video and everything. I mean. I knew that. I got to play it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, but hey. Play, yeah. Dude. For sure. Yeah. That's hey, man, tough. listen. Y'all going to. People going to quit trying Mike, Mike man. Going through it, though. Mike was going through you it. You damn right he was. Because yeah. he asked him to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Effing with him. Man. You damn right. Shout out to Mike. You damn right he did. So, which I, is worse? I knew you were to say some shit. Which, ahead, is, which is worse? Oh, out. Lord. You just figured out that, that he was saying it on screen, okay. or me just realizing on one day you hear on Ryan Dirty, UGK, that really wasn't Ron Isley. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not Ron Isley. Shout out to Who the group chat. Who knew that? Shout out to the group chat. That's my, one of my favorite albums of all time. I just knew that was Ron Isley. Shout out to the group chat. That's not Ron Isley. Shout out to the chat. God, it's over with. Shout out It's over with. Man. Done. <laughs> oh, God. Do Cameron is hot about it, too. <laughs> Man. Now, make sure y'all check us out on iTunes, Facebook, IG, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, Beyond Pod, YouTube, and, of course, the SoundCloud page to catch up on the full archive of past episodes. How do you do that? Just search Full Sport Press Podcast. While you're there, man, don't forget to support the Realville Family Patreon page. It features Full Sport Press on Deck TV, fresher than your average and much, much more. Be on the lookout to join that family Patreon page. Episodes are up. Support the team. Support the real Jeff. Yes, sir. You have 10 good wrestling seconds. Oh, yeah. Let's start the clock. Last week was Hell in a Cell. <laughs> so we have our who gets the W results. First, we had Rhea Ripley, the champion, versus Charlotte Flair. Locke and Wheezy had Charlotte Flair. Jay had Rhea Ripley. Jay gets the W. Bianca Belair versus Bailey for the SmackDown Championship. Jay and Wheezy had Bailey. Locke had Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair is still the champion. And the tiebreaker, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley was the champion. Wheezy and Jay take Drew McIntyre and Locke. Correctly predicted Bobby Lashley. Locke wins again. That's, That's right. Chalk. How did he pick Chalk? Chalk? He no. picked Chalk. He picked all champions. Uh, Nobody <laughs> lost the belt. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell me one hold person on. lost the hold belt. On. No one lost the belt. The first one lost the belt. No, no, no. no. no nobody lost the nobody belt. Lost the nobody belt. lost listen, the belt. Listen, listen. Don't get mad because I pick them. <laughs> don't get mad because I pick them. Make sure you You have each. your chance to pick them, and you don't. Chalk. You have your chance. <laughs> it's W. Write my chalk. W. Write my W in Chalk. No, my God. Listen, Chalk. Write my W in Chalk then. Each and every Thursday, make sure you tune in for the 808s and chair shots. Myself, shout out to my guy, Neek. And always remember, you might not like it, but your auntie, she loves wrestling. Most definitely, man. Tweets with the questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment. And give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell a friend. That the revolution will be podcasted. And before we get started, the first half, Jeff. Yes, sir. You have a Yellow Box of Cheerios Award recipient for the listeners. I sure do. Who's that? Your guy, <laughs> RG3. I got that uh, Washington football team mm-hmm. RG3 jersey. Mm. I really do. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That rookie year was special, though. It was. It was, it was special. rookie year. It was, yeah. look, yeah. it was, look, it was looking on the up and up. Yeah, can't yeah, knock him for that. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> cool Bob Griffin is what I call him. Not so cool. Raise some eyebrows on Wednesday when he posted an odd tweet of a video of his wife, Greet. Working out. This tweet had a video of his wife doing squats with an you know inlaid video of RG3 doing curls while staring at the camera. 
with the caption that said, come on, bro, your wife is white. Now, Van Lathan asked, what were you trying to say with that, RG? And he responded to Van and said, being white don't mean you ain't got cheeks, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> no one thought that, RG. No, <laughs> and the no. video isn't that impressive at all. No. Nah. Just keep it a bean. It's Let's not. just keep it all yeah, the way. It's not. Real regular. He should have deleted that one. Yeah. <laughs> And he yeah. tried to type it in Cam Newton font. Come on, man. <laughs> Cam Newton font ain't going to help you with that. Nah. Hey, spoiler alert. If we talking about cheeks. Oh, boy. It was medium It was medium <laughs> cheeks. Medium <laughs> cheeks right there. Me and cheeks. Look, there wasn't more cheeks. <laughs> no, the there wasn't more cheeks. No. The best comment I saw. Yeah. Tell us stand up. <laughs> right, boy. The cheeks, super mean. <laughs> I said, tell us stand up. <laughs> Hey man, ARG three. We's gonna deliver that one to yourself. Yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, like that's yeah. ridiculous. He needs homeboys. Yeah. He don't no. Look at RG. He don't. Have I knew RG didn't have homeboys when he would get his hair cut and the line was going Ooh. asymmetrical. Oh, like Bobby Browns used to go in the eighties when he had the Gumpy dog. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, nah. that ain't it. It's quiet, that ain't man. It's quiet for sure. Yeah, it's quiet for RG. Keep getting them checks though. I right, keep getting them checks. Yeah. It's over with. Though. You see him try to run that four three, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a four three. It's about a four five, mm-hmm. four six. Yeah, shit looks slow as hell. And Jeff, you know we got Manscaped. They've yes, been sir. advertising the performance package. Yes, sir. It comes with the 3.0. Mm. But guess what? They have a new performance package. Talk to me, coach. This performance package is going to come with a new 4.0 lawnmower. Okay. So, not only are you going to get the 4.0 lawnmower, you're going to get the weed whacker. You're going to get the crop preserver, <laughs> the crop reviver, <laughs> magic mat, travel bag, and boxers. <laughs> now. Yes, sir. We know they have deodorant. That's right. They yes, have sir. moisturizer. Oh, we might have some. You know, yeah. we got yeah. a little. We got you covered. Got man. a little, little. What's that little reviver? Find yeah. me, cameraman. Find got, me. Got a little reviver. You know what I'm saying? We got you covered. Get you revived. And I believe we have some good ball deodorant. Ball de- It's anti chafing, too. Yes, yeah, right. So yeah. it keeps you yes, good. Sir. Keeps you from shaving down there. Mm-hmm. Now, make sure you go to manscaped.com and you use that code FSP20. It's going to get you 20% off. Yeah. Got you. And it's also going to get you free shipping. Now, don't use that same tremor you use on your face. We no. talked about that. That's no. not cool. No, please. Don't do that. No, please. Only get that 4.0 mm-hmm. and your balls will thank you later. You're damn right. Yes, sir, coach. Yeah. They've been thanked. <laughs> <laughs> <We're doing ding>. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to start the first half? Let's do it. Let's get it. The first half is underway. First half, the hottest sports news of the past week, like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am Jay Hope. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your man, Coach Lock. Jeff, where can they find you on social media, my brother? Jay Easley 84 across all social media platforms. Sure. What about you, Coach? Man, nothing has changed, man. It's Lock underscore the underscore great. That's T H A. Get at me. Yeah, yeah. Man. And it's, whoa. Oh, oh, and this is Jay Hope on Instagram <laughs> and the Twitters. <laughs> holler to me on the Twitters. Yeah, sure. They ain't going to never holler at you on IG, huh? Sure. Yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's conversations on there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> How's that kingdom? Oh, <laughs> <that kingdom? laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. So, uh, oh, my bad. fellas, I have a uh, a surprise for the show and okay. The, okay. the studio. Okay. A good listener. Yeah. And a good friend of the show, yeah. my high school teammate, sent us a gift. Okay. okay. For the for the studio. Okay. okay. Well, let's do let's, look at that. We got a gift in the first what half. What we have is you mm-hmm. re- what, what we have, if you right here. Okay, okay, right here. Yeah, right. We got an official Miami Marlins on the field batting helmet. That's tough. This is a game. Joint. Yeah. The the the, the matte black. Tough, the new logo. So, you know, he listened to the show. He wanted to send us a little gift to put up in the studio. So, we got to find somewhere to put that That's official right. helmet. Shout, Shout out to my boy, yeah. Mike Shaw. Y'all check him out. Coach. Now, you nah. got, you got yeah. brain. Nah, yeah. You, See, you, you go, go ahead. Nah, I'm glad I said that. Nah, I will. Size that, 8 fit. Nah, I'm you, that's going to work. Oh, no. Find it. Find it, camera, man. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. That's going to be good. Hey, you got the tilt. Yeah, you got the tilt. Southside tilt. It's the new haircut. It's the new haircut. 
and cool ass haircut. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I think I'm gonna take out this head, put this shit. On. <laughs> yeah, but this is tough, man. Yeah, man. So shout out to him, man. This you know? is tough. I like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I might do the whole second half in the hat. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. That's tough. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to that, man. We appreciate, we appreciate that, that, Mike. We appreciate that. Yeah. He works for the Miami Marlins, so we appreciate that. Look at that, man. Yeah, yeah, Most yeah. Definitely, man. That's all right. It's all right. Some good appreciate that, here, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Let's get the first half off, man. It's NBA draft news, man. The 2021 NBA draft has been one of the more anticipated drafts in a while. Thanks in part to the immense talent at the top, we're here to talk about the biggest winners and losers from the lottery results. Jeff, you're up first. Give me a winner. Um, I'll take the Jeff. easy one, I guess. Okay. The Golden State Warriors. Nah, shit. They get two. That's low hanging fruit, ain't <laughs> yeah. it? They get two lottery picks, man. Two lottery picks on top of Clay coming back. On yeah. top of your lottery pick from last year, get another season under this belt. Yeah. Even if they just gonna use it for trade bait, which maybe it could be scary. Yeah. It could be scary. Mm, damn right. Yeah. What you got, coach? I have the Orlando Magic. Mm-hmm. Uh they fell down to the number five in the draft with their own pick, but they were able to keep the pick from Chicago at number eight. So they're gonna have two picks. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. the top Top ten. Yeah. Now they have some building blocks to work with, including your mm-hmm. boy Cole Anthony yeah. and Jonathan Isaac, who missed this past season Both due to suffering injury in the bubble. Yeah. So this is going to be really good for the Orlando match for sure, man. Yeah. yeah, it's a big winner. I also had the Warriors. I think they're the biggest winner, mainly due to the fact that they have seven and fourteen now. You trade seven for Pascal Siakam, and yeah. you package that along with Andrew Wiggins. The starting five would be Steph, Clay. Um, Draymond, you can put him at two, three, four, whatever the hell you want to put him. Pascal at the four, and then you bring Wiseman in at the five. It's, hey, yeah. and then if if you're Toronto, <clears throat> you do that immediately yeah. because you're bringing in a hometown hero. Yeah. You know, a Wiggins, you go and then rebuild. you do, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you have what four, seven, and something crazy like ten or something yeah. like that. They would have three in the in the first round. So yeah, man, yeah, that'd be dope, man. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, what about a loser, Jeff? Give me a loser. Uh, so to me, I don't want to pick on your team, so I'm going to leave them alone. <laughs> so I'm going to leave them alone. All right. I'm going to go OKC just because they had the best chance of at least getting a top five pick and or maybe even number two. And, yeah, they just got number six and 16 and 18. Yeah. Those are still three first-round picks. Pretty solid. But it's not what you wanted with that amount of – you know, collateral in this draft. You wanted to get a number one because this. You, I may be wrong about this. Talk to me. I don't think this is a deep draft. I don't think so neither. I think it's deep in the first round, not deep in the second round. For sure. I think it's deep in the first seven picks, maybe. No, nah, it's some late players. There's okay. I mean, yeah, of course, development. Yeah. Hopefully, but I think just coming into the draft, which you know, mm-hmm. you, you maybe got seven. Yeah. Maybe. So uh, I don't yeah. know. We'll see. I don't know about that. What you got, coach? Another loser. Well, uh, I'm on. I'm on a pick on your team, Chicago. <laughs> they had a 20 percent chance to get that top four overall spot and keep their pick, but it didn't happen. So they won't be picking until the 38th pick. Yeah. Now they do have Vucevic, they have Levine and Kobe White. So I don't see them next year being low enough to be in the running to get a top pick again because they're not going to be low enough in the standings with those players that they have. So it's going to be rough for them because they'll probably wind up getting something like maybe a 14th or 15th pick in the next draft. So Mm -hmm. that really hurt Chicago. Yeah, we got screwed on that. But we got an all-star out of that trade. Yeah. um, With – you know, we have – I think Lori Markman is a restricted free agent, so we bring Lori back. But it's tough, man. It is, that's a tough – it's definitely my losing. 20% chance, top four. It's, it's a high percentage. Yeah. Um. Also, with OKC, you know, Sam Presti, he opted to acquire every damn draft pick Everyone. ever. Every, right? <laughs> All of them. And it still didn't go according to plan. And then you don't get in that top five. Like you mentioned, Jeff, yeah. it's a top five heavy yeah. draft. You know, so if you get six, you're right outside of somebody that could be a potential, and I say this air quotely, game changer. Yeah. So, um, barring to move up into that top five, won't have access to any of those <clears throat> potential franchise changing players. Yeah. But I think OKC is some good pieces. They'll get rid of Kimber after a year. How they do everybody? They'll keep somebody for a year and then trade them. <laughs> Not hell. You know, and more assets. Yeah, more assets <laughs> for sure. So I hope it works out. But my Bulls, man. 
So do do we give AB some props for his team real quick? So we got a moment. No, we don't, no, okay. no, no. <clears throat> don't get the pistons. No love. Okay, so guys, the Tokyo Olympics are just about a month away. Uh, I'm pretty excited. The United States men's basketball team. Their roster is finally starting to shape out, and I think we got our 12 players with Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, James Harden. He has two legs now. And uh, Jason Tatum, they're rounding out probably the you know the biggest names on the list with Coach Pop and Steve Kerr with the all-star coaching lineup that they have. <laughs> Guys, is this 12-man roster good enough to run through and breeze through the Olympics this year? Run through and breeze through? No, I don't think so. Do I think they will win the Olympics? Yes, I still think they'll win it, but I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk. This roster is different from the World Cup roster in 2018 where they finished seventh. Mm -hmm. They only had two players from their team, Jason Tatum and Chris Middleton. Now, out of those 12, only three of them have Olympic experience. That's Kevin Durant, Kevin Love, and Draymond Green. So I think the team is going to win the Olympics and do good. I just don't think it's going to be a breeze for them. Yeah. Here's the thing with that team, man. They don't have any bigs. All of the American bigs are hurt True. or in the situation. They just didn't pan out. Yeah. Marvin Bagley, Anthony Davis, Jaleel Okafor. Mm -hmm. Man, the list goes on with our bigs. They're not ready yeah, to not play. Ready play. Yeah. They, just, they just aren't. And all the bigs that are our top five bigs in the NBA are all foreign-born players. Let's yeah. keep it real. They're not USA players. So I say that to say – Kevin Love is getting like ostracized because he shouldn't. They think he shouldn't be on the team. This is the thing. Kevin Love is in a trade him year, so we've seen <laughs> again so, every year, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude, you need Kevin Love to play on this because you literally don't have any bigs. Yeah. People are saying DeAndre Ayton should have. No, DeAndre Ayton's probably gonna play for the Bahamas. So you yeah. look at you know we just don't have any bigs. I think that's the only thing that I worry about with this team as far as size. But at the end of the day, man, listen. You put Draymond at the four, You let's go home. Let's oh, go man. home, man, because yeah. he's going to intimidate every big in the Olympics. How many ticks? Over or under, how many ticks for Draymond? I, I got five. Five ticks. Yeah, I got five. In international play. <laughs> international play, <laughs> for sure. Most definitely. Oh, real quick, Jalen Rose <clears throat> said there's always one white player on the team. And yeah. it, that's not it, it's been all black minus 2012. So, yeah. He's saying he's the token, and I don't think he's a token. I really do think that they need a person that plays a bigger position that can stretch the floor. But how do y'all feel about Jalen Rose real quick? I think Jalen Rose spoke – when you initially saw this roster, right. before you before you put your basketball eyes on it, your basketball mm -hmm. mind, Kevin Love get there. Yeah. Like he, we just, last time we saw Kevin Love, he quit yeah. in the middle of a game. Look who he's playing with. That's man. true. It's That's a black true. hole. That's true. Then you got uh, Larry Nance. Right. <laughs> Deli Meat still there. <laughs> God, Deli, Deli, Deli Meat still there. Deli Meat can play time. That's nuts. There's no Deli, way Deli Meat is Deli still Meat is the – bro, he's there. He got the bag from, Mil, from uh, Milwaukee. And they, and they, they sent him to Cleveland. They did trade him yeah. back. <laughs> they did. He out there with yeah. Deli Meat. <laughs> yeah. That ain't it. Yeah. Ain't it at all. Now, as we know – Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> where, 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 where are we going? Whoa. Whoa. Nah, 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 I ain't no problem. Okay. Okay. It was some straight. Oh, okay. oh, it was some straight. No. Okay. I'm sure. I hear this okay. Okay. <laughs> so the, the 76ers, though, didn't hold up to what everybody thought they were going to be when they, they lost not. to the Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference <laughs> semifinals. Who got a lot of that blame? Ben Simmons. <laughs> so my question for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Will Ben Simmons be traded by the start of the 2021-22 <laughs> NBA season? No, they won't trade him. They, they, you, you, you look like you give up if you trade him. And I think it's too many people making too much money to admit that they're wrong when they should. Because they could trade him for a real point guard, but they won't. They'll keep him. They come back and get the same, <clears throat> the same results next year. Scotty Pippen said it best, and there's no disrespect to Ben Simmons. Scotty Pippen said it best. Doc Rivers set him out for failure. No. Nah. Here, here's what he said. Ben Simmons has been the same person no matter what. He's never showed that he's going to do anything different. So why would you keep putting him in that position, game in after game, once you realize they're going to do hack a Ben? Once, once Washington did it in the playoffs and saw what it, how it worked, you got to take him out of the close game fourth quarter. He can't play. He compared him to Giannis, and this was to me. I don't mean to, take up too, make, mean to take up too much time. He compared him to Giannis. He said, "You can put Giannis out there. Giannis will miss two free throws, airball both of them. 
will come back the next time and still try to dunk on you. That's right. Ben Simmons will miss both free throws and will pass the ball from there on. Will not take a shot. Yeah. Now, nah, listen. And, you know, Ben Simmons is my guy. But you can't go 15 for 45 from the damn free throw line across seven games. That's just unacceptable. Ben Simmons has been playing out of position his entire career in the NBA. Should have been playing the four. He will be a Philadelphia 76 once the season starts, but he will be the four. Tobias will move to the three. Danny Green, Matisse, Seth will play the two, and they'll get a point guard, a starting point guard, somebody like Kyle Lowry. So, yeah, he'll be he'll be there and he'll be fine. Putting him in the mid-post, man, he go baseline, how he can throw lobs. He could be John Collins, what John Collins has been for the Hawks right now. He can do that. He just can't shoot. That's real, it. Real quick, lot. Who's been saying he's been playing out of position the whole time? No, you definitely said that, but this you is the mean. thing. At a four, if this is the thing. He's six eleven. True. There's never been a six eleven player that can dribble and pass the way that he can. So in turn, you have to put him at point. But he should have been playing the four his entire career. Yeah. He'll be in Philly, man. For one, he's owed too much money, and it's not like Philadelphia went into the playoff as a seven seed. They were the number two seed. Very true. So they were number one. one. Oh, they did want up number, number one. one. Yes, they did want up number one because Brooklyn got hurt and they fell off. Yeah. So clearly something is working. He averaged 14, 7, and 7 in the regular season. He just has to learn how to play with confidence when it's not going his way. Get in the gym and shoot free throws. He lost his confidence against the Hawks and it destroyed him. He only shot 6.4 shots a game in that series. That's not enough. Not when you're getting chances at layups. You got to take those layups and those dunks. So, no, I don't think he'll be traded. He played so bad, his trade stock dropped, and he's owed a lot of money. So he will be in Philly next year. I don't think the stock is too low, though. I think no, I think still, I think it's teams that want. Yeah. If if you got a strong number one and a solid two, and you can get Ben Simmons as your three, yeah. you'll take him. This is the thing: fifteen teams have reached out to the Philadelphia 76ers and his agent to trade for Ben Simmons yeah. because there's everybody, a GM, a coach is looking at him. It's like, I know, I know how to yeah, use I him. Can unlock I can, him. I can, I yeah. can do that, right? Yeah. But ain't no way in the world I'm going to sit here and let y'all do all of this to Ben Simmons and not bring up Tobias Harris. Their second leading scorer played in that game for four games. He averaged 21 and a half points, and he had one game. We had six in one game. He had eight. If you are the second scorer on this team, you have to be that person. Tobias Harris, did. he let Doc Rivers down. He let Joel Embiid down. You have to do that. You've done that at a high level. Oh, Tobias Harris this, Tobias Harris that. Step up. Can Play I, your damn role. Can I speak to that? Please. Okay. Totally agree. Is he number three on the team or is he number two? Because if he's number two, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about I'm period. Not talking about offense. I'm talking about his option as the player. Is he the second best player on the team or the third? Option. He's the second option. Okay. Well, I, me personally, I don't. I think his stock may be lower than Ben Simmons, but you get what you can for Tobias Harris and try to bring in a point guard, and you just and you go back to you go back to the well and see what happens. Because Seth is ready. Yeah, offensively, Ben Simmons is the fourth option on offense. But yeah, I'm I'm referring more so to team. money. Like, no, just is it is he your second best player? No, he's the second. I mean, that was always the option. problem. So Joel it runs through Joel. Joel's right. busy and he's getting double teamed. You give it to Tobias. Tobias isn't open. You give it to Seth, and then you know what? Ben Simmons will get in there and give that. It just go. That's the pecking order on offense. Now defense is Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, one A, one B. And in and, and, and uh, your man's yeah, Matisse. Yeah, yeah Matisse yeah. is third. Yeah, yeah. They both let. They him both down. made. Uh, they just both let down. Right. Yeah. Thibault and Embiid made second seed off defense. Yeah, Ben was one. Yeah, first. Ben was one. Yeah, for sure. They both let Doc down. That's that's just what it is. Yeah, but more to buys though Doc because let, no. Fucking Ben Simmons did his job on defense. Let's keep it a band. Yeah, but that's, if he did his, he did his. That's what he was there to do. He defeat. did. If he would have just attempted those shots, he wouldn't have got all the flack he yeah, was getting. Yeah, no, and that's what he was doing in the regular. That's it. Yeah. You have to attempt those shots. Whether you make them or not. He wouldn't make them. You shit. have to attempt He them. wasn't even tempted. If he's yeah. attempting those shots, he would not be getting all the flack that he's getting. 33% from the free throw line is disgusting. It is. That is disgusting. How you shoot worse than Shaq? I've been saying his entire career, Coach. Ben Simmons is right hand. He's right hand dominant. Um, what's the guy's name? Tristan Thompson changed his his hand yeah. in his first year. You can do that still. Yeah. You can okay. do he it. He said he's going back right handed. Who? Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Nah, Rich ain't gonna let him do that. And uh, listen, 
Rich, we, we talk about player development. If your agent need to find a way to get this boy to square it away, y'all talk about Clutch versus the world. Clutch is looking crazy because of that. Because that boy need to be in a situation where he's okay. He needs to be comfortable hooping, and his agent is dropping the ball. Joel Embiid is so mad about that, he dropped his agent. <laughs> but he fired his how agent. You bring, how are you blaming Rich Paul for this? Because he, that your agent, if you see your client uh -huh. is in a situation where he is not – Manifesting what he's supposed to be, True. right? You're just getting him paid. He got him paid. He's right? paid. He's paid. Got his hundred eighty million. To me. He got his. This is the thing, though. Ben Simmons is on the trajectory to be the next person. He was number one pick, rookie of the year. Who wop the band? He is not progressing the way that the Philadelphia 76ers and Rich Paul wanted him to progress. He but, should have a sneaker by now. But, but other players can't. on clutch are progressing. Who? Darius Garland. Oh, Chopped him took in. a nice step. Great step. Took they're a nice step. They're, they're so some of that, I, you can't just put that on your agent. You know what you need to work on. And he's working in the summer. I just need to work somewhere else. Hey, he, 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 he can make that decision. Are can we, he? Are we yeah, being? No, he can't. Shh. Clutch is different. Here's, Here's the question. Clutch, you know Clutch <laughs> is different. Here's the question nobody's <laughs> asking. Is Ben Simmons, have we seen the best of Ben Simmons? He's 24 years old. That doesn't mean anything. Have you seen somebody the best at 24 years old? Yeah. Injuries. We saw, we Injuries. saw the best of Andre Jones. I'm not Andre Jones. Uh, Greg Monroe at 24. Not, to, not comparing Ben Simmons to Greg Monroe. We saw, we, saw ben, we saw the best of Greg Monroe at 19. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Josh Smith. Josh Smith game, as good as Josh Smith was, once he, once he developed, once he saw that there was a three-point line, his game never got any better. No. I mean, this is the thing, though. Ben Simmons is fine. He need to talk to Rich. Rich need to get him with the right people. My agent... Your agent is supposed to get you with the right people. Move him off the point. Yeah. Trade Tobias Harris for whatever you can in linebacker. Nah, you can't. You can't trade Tobias. You got to. You, you, you have to. Who, who are you trading for? You, you whatever you can get. You know what? You That's, get a point guard. That you get a Rondo. You get a. You can't get no damn Rondo. They said Rondo ain't helping that team. Cause he get the ball out of his hands. He can't have the ball. Stop. You know why he can't have the ball? Because when he has the ball, he we don't have the ball. We gonna foul him. If he on the court, we're going to find him. He never had a ball in his hand. He's bringing the ball to court. He's bringing the ball and giving the ball up so fast. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, That's obviously, ridiculous. he don't need to do that is what I mean. That's all. Clutch supposed to rule the world, huh? They do. He got him paid. Got Clutch him. supposed to rule the world, though. He might be the biggest shuck we've ever seen. You know who the biggest shuck we've ever seen. No. Oh, if, if, if he we know who the biggest shuck. Listen. His if, name is LeVar Eugene Ball. No. LeVar no, has no. sneakers <laughs> by sketches and saying that you, was a big you, baller brand. You're going somewhere different. I'm you talking about basketball player? If Ben Simmons doesn't progress from the time he was drafted no. to the time, if four years from now, he four, no, hit me out. Just hit me out. He make this point. I'm done. Four years from now, if we're still having this conversation about him four years from now, if he's still averaging 12 to 14 points a game, six to seven rebounds a game, and six to seven assists a game, he did not reach his potential. Andrew Wiggins. But what if he's no, no, no. what if he's doing that and he's shooting sixty nine percent from the free throw line? He's gonna that means he's sixty nine percent from the free throw or just over from the field free throw line. Because if, if he shoots sixty nine percent from free throw line, they win the series. Okay. So if, what if he's doing those same numbers but he's shooting sixty nine percent? Because now you're not gonna you, foul him. Okay. If you if, if he shoots sixty nine percent, I'm still fouling. Andrew Liggins, is but they're gonna win that game. I'll take my chances. Until he get the until he get the seventy five eighty percent, no, I'm oh, still doing heck of a and, and, yeah. no, and there's no six ten players other than Joel Embiid just shooting seventy eighty percent from. That's what I'm saying. But he's still. Go ahead. You wrong about Andrew Wiggins. Though. No, I Andrew, wasn't saying. I'm, and Andrew Wiggins. I, we can do it off the court because we're getting long in the two. We can do it off camera. Let's get started with halftime. We're at the midway point. Please enjoy all of the halftime festivities. <laughs> halftime. In case you missed it, Coach Lock is back with another edition. Let's hear it, Coach. All right, so the NFL makes the long-awaited change to the alternate helmet policy. The NFL has made the long overdue decision to allow teams to wear throwback helmets in addition to their throwback uniforms, reversing a years-long policy prohibiting alternate, excuse me, alternate helmets. Now, why was this an issue in the beginning of the NFL? They said they would not allow teams to wear those alternate helmets because they thought it was a safety issue. Now, back in 2013, the Head, Neck, and Spine Committee, chaired by Drs. Hunt, Badier, Richard Ellibogian, and Player Safety Advisory Panel, chaired by John Madden and Ronnie Lott, recommended that players no longer wear different helmets because they thought it would be a safety issue with the secondary helmet. Now, 
Why would it be an issue with the secondary helmet? They're going to use the same technology in the secondary helmet that they use in the primary helmet. So this will not go into effect until the 2022 season, though. So you won't see these helmets next year. But the year after that, you'll start to see teams have secondary helmets, which would be their throwback helmets to go to their throwback uniforms. Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? I think it's a great idea. The NFL is trying to shed that no fun league yeah. title. Um I understand why it's taking a season to do though, because you want to get that technology right. You don't want to. You, you might want to bring back the old school feel of the helmet, but you don't want to bring back those old school concussions though. We don't need that. Ooh, so, old school concussions. We don't, we don't need those old school concussions. Corporate thugs entertainment, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, no, nah, man. Those alternate helmets, man, are always fire. I always wondered when you're playing Madden, you know, there's some alternate helmets. I'm like, damn, man, they need to bring those back. So it'd be cool to kind of see on the field, especially with the new jerseys that they come out with as far as their alternate jersey they play on Thursdays. But we need one more jersey. We need some of the cooler jerseys. And I get what they're doing. They have to stick with tradition, right. per se. Right. But if baseball is letting – they going crazy Great with their jerseys. Mm -hmm. They going crazy. <laughs> so if they can go crazy 100%, man, you got to let – the uh, football teams go crazy, too. And it needs to mix over into college football, too. Because I'm tired of them damn Alabama and them Penn State jerseys. Them Alabama small. be kicking ass in some <laughs> trash jerseys. But never change. Never change. Playing Alabama, Jane. Notre Dame. Alumni. Penn State. The alumni. Never. Never, never alumni. Change. They never. don't play. Never. never but that's change. the thing. Uh, you know, and I know this is somebody's family, but the rest in peace. They, you know, the old rules are going away, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. in turn, I think some of the younger people that are, you know, just graduating still like tradition per se. Yeah, yeah. Tradition. I'm tired of tradition, dog. I understand, but yeah. I don't think those three like Penn State. That ain't changing. The Penn State, ain't changing. Alabama's not changing. Alabama's Alabama's Notre Dame's not changing. No, no, they ain't changed a little bit though. They be mixing it up though. I don't want to be getting them right though. They be having the green jerseys. Yeah. Uh, they well, go that, super. That's because yeah. of the that fits. I think that that's green true. jersey fits. But yeah. Uh, yeah, they're gonna get too wild though. Oh no, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. They ain't gonna get like, too. You ain't wild. gonna see no, no, no four leaf clover nothing on the helmet. Just imagine if Alabama come out in black jerseys. Mm. I, listen, I need Florida State to pull out them black helmets with the gold that's face mask. Y'all ain't got no reason. Here you go, man. Here There's you go, no reason man. to pull him out. We got to, you going to pull him out go. and get drunk, hey, man. We're going to look good. Hey, you going to look good. You go out <laughs> and get crushed. Hey, man, when we had, when we could have pulled him out, we was looking good and playing good. We didn't use. But, hey, listen, y'all ain't getting them until they get crazy again. <laughs> 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 we got to spend some more money, man. Yeah. We got to get them alumni. Yeah. Get That's what you need. Get the bus. Yeah. 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 yeah good. Hey, yeah. brown yeah. paper bag. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we need some you know it's out of floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right out of floor. Tally. Do are, are we going fat moles? No, no. We gonna wait it out. 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 That's what's up. You guys ready to get started? The second half. Yes, sir. Let's get it. The second half is underway. Second half, the 2021 NBA Conference Finals Breakdown Show, Episode 374. I am Jay Hope. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your man, Coach Locke. Locke, the 2021 Eastern and Western Conference Finals have begun. It's time to make some predictions who represent the conference in each respective side in the NBA Finals. We're here to break down those predictions, man. Listen, Eastern Conference Finals, let's kick it off with the East. <laughs> It's an Eastern Conference matchup. Nobody predicted, Jeff. Nobody. Nobody, including <laughs> Hawks fans. <laughs> including Hawks fans. Upstar Hawks famously went 14-20 and 20 before firing my guy, um, Lloyd Carr, Carr, and hiring Nate McMillan, who still hasn't yeah. removed the interim tag. No. Uh, he went to the end of the year. Okay. You'll get right. the big boy back. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And jump starting their run to the playoffs, taking on two time MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and the Bucks, man, the number three seed versus the five seed Atlanta Hawks, man. Current series, Atlanta, as we record this, it's up one to nothing. Mm -hmm. Should be tied it's pretty gonna soon. Be tied. <laughs> gonna be tied pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. Let's start off the biggest weakness for the Bucks, Jeff. What you got? Coaching adjustments. Woo! They have they, the Bucks got one speed. Woo! Got one speed. The jumper's not falling from Middleton or Drew Holiday, and you depending on Giannis to carry you. I mean, of course, he's gonna give you his forty, maybe. But mm. that's all he got. That's all they. They don't have another way to do this. They got one way. Bud Ball's not gonna change that up. That's their only weakness to me. Sure. Mm. You got coach. I got a different weakness. Uh, they have to figure out how to guard the pick and roll. It is killing them, and a lot of that's because Lopez cannot come out of the paint. So every time Trey comes off that pick and roll, if you back in that paint, it's barbecue chicken. Because if you don't, he going to pull up, knock down a shot or the floater, 
Or if you Absolutely. wait and he comes in, you step up, he's going to throw the lob to Capella. So they have to learn or figure out how to guard that pick and roll. Yeah, for sure. My biggest weakness for the Bucks is coaching, man. It's just it's obvious. That <laughs> Bud Ball, that's, he's been out coached every series so far. Every series that he's been in as a coach, he's been out coached. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> that's terrible, man. How are you the number one defensive team in the regular season? And then when you come into a series where a team that runs nothing but pick and rolls, you do not step up on the pick and roll with your bigs. You have your big sagging off of Trey Young like he is Rajon Rondo. Terrible. You're playing him from the paint. Terrible. You can't, can't play Trey Young from the paint. Can't do that. You cannot do that. Do that. You've seen that in every series. Yeah. You have to step up on this kid. And if you step up on him, he's making everybody else shoot. Yeah. Guess what? That's what you, you have to do. You gotta and you got to live with that, yeah. Jeff. You can't let Trey Young go crazy like nah, he went crazy in game one. Can't do that. Went crazy, man. So definitely their biggest weakness. What about the biggest weakness for the Hawks, Jeff? To me, real quick, Jeff is a Hawks fan. Yeah, yes. Jeff is the only Hawks fan that I know. That's not Jeff. Me. Jeff is the only Hawks fan that has been consistent <laughs> as long as I've known Jeff to be a Hawks fan. Mm. Now the people that live in Atlanta mm-hmm. that say, "Oh, let's go Hawks," we, I, I told y'all, we. Mm. Jeff, you are the only person that I respect doing mm. that because you know why? You are a Hawks fan. Yeah. Let's proceed. Mm. So the biggest <laughs> Oh, somebody listening going to be hot no, about that. No, that's facts, though. Those are facts. Oh, my God. Those are facts. <laughs> hot. That's facts. I think, to me, to me, honestly, the biggest weakness for the Hawks is they fall in love with the Trey ball. Mm. I think, to me, if Trey Young really decided that he wanted to be a dribble drive, dribble penetration point guard and, and run the offense that way, I think they could be buzzword more efficient mm. if he did that instead of falling in love with the three ball across the board. That is probably to me from Nick's series to this one has been the biggest weakness that the Hawks at times fall in love with the three ball. NBA as a whole, but definitely yeah. the Hawks. Most definitely. You got coach? Uh, the biggest weakness to me is they don't have anyone to guard Giannis. Mm. They can't guard him. They just have to rely on him not being able to make those shots in the paint and missing free throws because you don't have any guards. Herder can't guard him. Uh, Bogdanovich can't guard him. Mm-mm. We know Trey Young can't guard him. <laughs> so they don't have anybody to stop Giannis. Yeah. My biggest weakness for the Hawks is no Bogdanovich, man. You need him at 100%. Yeah. He is a catalyst to that team. They were 14 and 20 because Bogdanovich was hurt. That's why they were playing Cam Reddish for 28 minutes, okay? (laughs) Because they needed somebody to step in. Now Bogdanovich is back, and it looks like, oh, man, you know what? The person that we went and paid $70 million for is going to work out. Is actually going to work out. You need him. Um, He was the reason that they proceeded past the Hawks. Not the Hawks, the Knicks. He had a huge series against them. Every time they passed about him, I said, oh, that's cash. Mm -hmm. Every time. So, in turn, you need somebody else that's confident out there. Harder is really good, but just imagine him and Harder being out there at 100%. So, Bogdanovich not being 100%, that's vital. Very vital. Um, Move on to the matchup to watch, Jeff. Um, I disagree with what you're saying, Coach. Mm. I think they have someone who can bother Giannis, and that's Capella. Bother, bother. Okay. Like no one, no one on in the NBA can guard him one on one if he chooses not to be guarded. But sometimes Giannis will do things like take a playoff and allow James Harden to force him into a fadeaway jump shot. Clint Capella is strong enough, long enough, pause to make sure that he at least has to work for everything he's doing. Is so the same way Clint played Joel Embiid. He could play Giannis the same way and even better because you don't have to worry about Giannis stepping anywhere near past the free throw line. So, to me, that helps. And it showed in game one because Giannis is not going to step out to that three-point three line. If he does, let him shoot. Sure. He got to make five before we can worry about it. Mm-hmm. Damn right. My matchup to watch is Trey Young and Drew Holiday. That was the key addition for the Bucks that got them to this point. It was somebody that could come in that was allowed to play defense and take some of the pressure off Middleton and off Giannis. We knew Middleton got the money. We knew Giannis got the money. But Drew Holiday brings another dynamic to that team. He's going to guard on defense, and then he's going to have games where he goes off, but he's going to give you a consistent score. It might not be 25, but he's going to give you about 15 or so. So Drew Holiday can slow down Trey Young. 
that could be big for the Bucks. If he doesn't, we know Trey Young gonna go off, and the Hawks are gonna go off. Yeah, I agree, man. That's my matchup to watch: Drew Holiday versus Trey Young, because that's the reason they signed him to an extension mm. to stop point guards in the Eastern Conference. Mm. Young had his worst game when they only played the one time that both of those were um, actually healthy yeah. to play. Yeah. He was three for seventeen from the floor, man. Drew historically gets better after each game for this matchup. And I think if you look back at previous series, he just finds a way to kind of create an advantage for mm. himself. And it's like, oh, okay, maybe if I can do this, X, Y, and Z. And he does that, man. He traces the tone, man, for the Hawks on offense, even more pressure for the Bucks If they are able to apply a little bit more pressure, knock him off of his pivot. You know, he's shimmying and dancing. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you got to find a way to get close to him close out on him, and I think <laughs> Drew Holiday uh, will figure that out as the series goes along, for sure. The Bucks win this series if what, Jeff? They got to make it ugly. Mm. Got to make it hard to watch. Can't allow the shimmies. <laughs> Can't allow passes off the backboard. You know, stuff like that. That's what the Hawks need. They need the flash. The Bucks need to make this ugly. Like Pistons, Spurs ugly. Mm. Good God, that was that was a nasty, yeah. nasty series. But that's yeah. what the Bucks. That's how the Bucks gonna win. Get physical with Trey Young. Make those other, make those shooters uncomfortable to take shots. Put PJ Tucker out there. Yeah. Make it ugly, man. Yeah. Bucks win this series, of course, if Drew Holiday slows down Trey Young, but also Chris Middleton plays up to his multi-million dollar contract. Mm -hmm. He cannot come out and go six for nineteen from the field. If he does that, they are not gonna win the game. Giannis is still gonna get his. Drew might have that 25 points, but they need Middleton to make those shots to make it hard for you to clamp Giannis up in the paint. Because mm. if he drives to the paint and you helping and he's keeping out the Middleton, he's making shots, it's going to be a long night. Yeah. The Bucks win the series if they play Bobby Portis longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> play him instead of Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez has cement blocks for feet. So in turn, getting out there, you can't defend on a pick and roll. He's going to get smoked. Mm -hmm. Or John Collins, you switch John Collins, he's going to go right past him. You got to play Bobby Portis. He's the reason that they won so many games in the regular season. He was top five in three-point percentage. And I know he's playing for a contract, so you have to get a person in. Like, well, we got to put some sour on him because, you know, we don't want him to go and get more money than we really want to pay him. Yeah. So, in turn, I know what they're doing. But to win games, yeah. especially with him, you got to play him because you don't have white Dante. Let's just keep it real. <laughs> White Dante is a valuable, valuable, valuable player yeah. for the Bucks, man. So if you don't have him, you need Bobby Portis to play. I don't understand why. Why self-sabotaging? And I get it. It's coming from upstairs, but Bud, <laughs> come Bud on. Needs yeah, Bud needs it. <laughs> for sure. Jeff, the Hawks win the series if what? They don't look at the lights. Don't realize that you're nowhere. You, we all know you're not supposed to be there, but they can't. they can't say that. Yeah. They can't understand that. They can't look up and realize, man, we need these conference finals. Because the moment they do that, it's over with. Because they play loose. They play confident. They play borderline cocky. And that's what makes them fun to watch. But the moment they lose that, it's over with. Yeah. It's over with. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to kind of go opposite of what you said earlier about something. You said it will hurt them, and it will. If it goes right, it'll be great for them. They have to shoot the three ball great. Okay. If Herda and Gallinari, they making shots. Trey Young is that harder to guard because, like you mentioned earlier, Jay, he comes off that pick and roll, and you help, and he kicking the one of them when they're making shots. It's going to be a long night. Long night. So they have to make the three ball if they want to win the series. Yeah, I agree with that too. I think they win the series if Giannis Antetokounmpo is looking and listening to ESPN, <laughs> Full Sport Press, anybody, <laughs> because this is his moment, man. This is his best chance to ever advance to the NBA Finals, man. And, if you find your way to look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, hey, listen, I'm a two-time MVP, defensive player of the year. I'm this, I'm this, I'm the best player. Show it. Step up. But in turn, if he is going through that and is like, man, I can't do this. Or he's talking to Thonis. What's his brother's name? It's close the, enough. The, the yeah. Nassus. Yeah. You're talking to your brother and he's like, we need you, man. And you fall under that pressure. I've seen the pressure literally ruin some of the best basketball players, football players. Yeah. Just looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, man, I can't do this. And I think Giannis is one of those guys. So I think the Hawks do that if he falls to the pressure of full sport press and ESPN. Because <laughs> sure. it can happen. And the Bucks are 7 0 in the postseason, like Locke said, if they hold people under 12 3. So that's a great point, Locke. 
Final prediction, Jeff. Uh, series. I think, unfortunately, the Hawks look up and they see themselves. Um, and it's going to be a six-game series. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to do. And I'm not going to be upset because they lose, but I think the Bucks win this in six. Y'all overachieved this year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Man. Yeah, because yeah, sure. y'all are real young, a nice young core. Hell yeah. But it's not. But one thing, the reason why I say you can't look at the lights because it's not guaranteed you make it back. Look at OKC. Whew. Look, look at Dan Marino. Look at, look at mm-hmm. oh, well, it's a different sport, but great point, though. <laughs> but, but OKC, that young nucleus they had made the that's final against Miami and never sniffed it again. Yeah. Never true. will. I'm going to go Bucks in seven. I think it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth. And I think the Bucks will pull it out in game seven. Like you mentioned, Jeff, with the likes, it would get too bright for those young boys. <laughs> and I'm going to go Bucks in seven. Yeah. I got the Bucks in six, man. It's really hard to win in Atlanta. The Bucks, you know, really good on the road. But the Hawks play better on the road. This is insane. I can't. They were down eighteen and twenty five on the road. They won three of those games against the Seventy Sixes on the road. So um, it doesn't really matter about home court advantage. But I got the Bucks in six. This is a valiant effort, man. They were supposed to lose last series. Yeah, they barely were supposed to get past the Knicks. Yeah, they Let's weren't. They it. were not supposed to get past. The Knicks. Yeah, that's they what I'm saying. Lose, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. So to see these guys playing in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's a that's a testament, man. And if you can keep that nucleus, especially John Collins, because they were thinking about trading they John were. Collins. They were. If you keep him around, man, alongside Trey, just gotta cut Trey's hair, man. That's the only thing I worry about <laughs> with them. Can't cut, can't cut Trey hair. Yeah, you it's why? A, it's a bronze situation. Can't cut that. That's your thing. It's, it's, it's over with. Up it's, up, mm. it's, it's, it's thin over. up there. Yeah, it's over. Mm. Yeah, we can't cut that. Yeah, so we gotta keep that little we shit. Gotta keep that. Dang. That's why he's keeping that. Yeah, yeah. Can he? Can, will it grow to the point where he get a little ponytail or something? Nah, I don't know. Bro. Don't know. If you really look at Trey, yeah, it's over with. It's, 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 it's real, it's, it's, real it's, light it's, thin. It's real thin. He's twenty two. Yeah, God That's is not good. good. <laughs> God is good for sure. Let's move on to the Western Conference Finals. We have the number two seed Phoenix Suns versus number four seed L A Clippers. Currently, the series two one Suns will kick things off just like we did with the Eastern Conference. The biggest weakness for the Suns, Jeff. The biggest weakness for the Suns to me. Oh shit. <laughs> we, hey, listen, listeners, and all the listeners know this. Cameraman know this. Lock know this. Listen, and Jeff is going into <laughs> to me <laughs> some bull <laughs> coming. <laughs> it is. It is some. It is some BS coming. It's some Southside shut going on. Uh-oh. Proceed, my brother. All I was going to say, honestly, <laughs> honestly, truly, their only weakness is sometimes they allow the other team. To dictate their emotions of the game, Pat Bell has at times gotten under Booker's skin. That's it. Like that's because to, to me on paper, I never saw this team excelling the way they have. Just being honest. You talking about the Suns? Yeah? Suns, yeah. Oh yeah. But <laughs> to me, at times, even in the games they've won, even in series, the series before this, if you get a little, you know, just a little, yeah, with them, they'll they'll. Not not fall back from it, just engage with it. And you can't do that. Yeah. You gotta be above that. That's all. Yeah. When they go low, we go high, man. Got to. Yeah. Sure. Especially when you are the favorite. Sure. Yeah, Jeff, I was struggling to find a weakness for the Suns also. And the one thing I came up with is when the Clippers go small ball, that's the, the hardest thing for them to guard because now you take DeAndre Ayton out of the paint, which he's gonna stop, you know. People from getting to the paint like Paul George, Reggie Jackson, he'll have to step out because the Clippers were one of the best three point shooting teams in the season. So if they're making shots and you go small ball, he has to come out of the paint. So that's the only weakness I could really see for the Suns. My biggest weakness for the Suns is campaign's ankle injury. Um, with CP coming back, still a little rusty condition. His rhythm seemed a little bit affected by the layoff that he had. A little bit. When campaign rightfully left so. the game, rightfully so, yeah. When campaign left the game with that ankle injury, you just saw CP, you know, just trying to do too much to get the ball. He didn't, he wasn't supposed to play forty minutes that mm-hmm. game. So in turn, with him playing forty minutes, the entire third quarter unravels. Usually in times where campaign would come in and give a relief for uh, my guy CP, and he didn't get that. In turn, that third quarter was just rough, man. So. Um, Campaign being healthy, you got to play each one more. Mm. It's nothing like a good third point guard, is what I'm saying mm. for sure. Especially a backup point guard, which is vital that we notice because that's the reason they're up two one because he had a really good game in game two. Yeah, 
Moving on to the Clippers, what's the biggest weakness for those guys? No Kawhi. That's right. Not even, I mean, not even going to get too in-depth in the analysis or nothing like that. The biggest weakness is your best player is not there and isn't going to be there. They, they can they can wait every game and say he's not going to be there all they want. He's not playing. He's not playing this series. He's not playing at all. He's not walking through that locker room no, door. No, he's not walking on that court. Not with no jersey. <laughs> Michael Oliver Candy's not walking through that door. They're, they're lucky he's not. Lamar Odom's not walking through that door. There's Miles. The young, the young bouncy Sean Livingston is not walking through that door. Keon Doolin <laughs> is not walking Corey through. Corey McGetty is Eric not walking over there. Piakowski is not Ooh. walking Ooh. Come on. <laughs> you, 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 went, you went back right there. You went, you went back right there. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I agree, Jeff. Kawhi, he's injured. They're not going to have enough. You can't rely on Reggie Jackson to do what he's been doing night in and night out. Yeah. He's just not made like that. So Kawhi not being there, he has to try to step up to help Paul George with the scoring, and he's not going to be able to do that night in and night out. I just don't see it. So Kawhi not being there is definitely the biggest weakness. Yeah. My biggest weakness for the Clippers is fatigue, man. Shout out to Sean Walsh for this stat, man. He said the Clippers have played every other day since June 1st. Jesus. Every other day? Because you know why? they always going down, down in a series. Yeah, so just play too many games, man, and you're missing – your favorite, not your favorite, your best player. Yeah. And it's tough, man. You're just going to gas out, you know, if they're not playing from behind all the damn time. <laughs> maybe Kawhi doesn't get hurt because he's not, you know. Overexerting himself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it's fatigue. I think fatigue for that one. Uh, moving on to matchup to watch. What's your matchup to watch, yeah? My matchup to watch is Ty Lue versus Monty Williams. Mm, it's fun like to that. watch. Yeah. Mm. These two are – if you if you're into X's and O's, you're into coaching, you're into adjustments, you're into how to handle the modern era player. Mm-hmm. These two are put on the clinic. The fact that Ty Lue is coaching Paul George even when the game is over, saying he the first person he called after that loss, after that the the what they call it the Valley Oop, mm-hmm. the first person he called after the Valley Oop was Paul George. Mm-hmm. We need you to be here. We don't do anything without you. Yeah, he's doing that to a person who we know that at times. Mm-hmm. Mentally checks out. Checks out. Mm-hmm. And he's making sure he's he's all in board. Sure. That's mm-hmm. a good coach. That's a great coach. Great yeah. coach. And Monty Williams called a value. My mm-hmm. goodness. So mm-hmm. we're watching two people on the clinic right now. Sure. That's the matchup for me. I like that. I'm gonna pick kind of piggyback off that. I have Jay Crowder versus Paul George. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what it is. If Jay Crowder can slow down Paul George, they don't stand a chance. Not a chance in here. Well, you know, we know <laughs> Pat Bev is guarding Booker, but Booker can have an off night and like we talked about him saying Chris Paul can step up and kind of cover for that. If Paul George has the off night, it's night night for the Clippers. Mm-hmm. So Jay Crowder and Paul George is my matchup to watch. Yeah. Uh, my matchup to watch is DeAndre Ayton versus the centers. Mm-hmm. Between game six in Dallas and against Utah, they played Zubak. So in turn, they found a formula that kind of worked against specific opponents. Small ball kind of allows the Clippers to kind of do, you know, switching on picks and pick and rolls, featuring Luka and Donovan Mitchell, right. situations like that. If they can find a way to play Zubak because he offensive rebounds like crazy. Yeah. It seems like every rebound is going closer to him. He has like a magnet to get offensive rebounds. If they can find a way to play him and still get into a situation where they can score on the other end, mm. man, sky's the limit. But I love watching Aiden play. Plays like a guard at the center position. Wanted to be a little bit more aggressive because we'll see him go 12 for 15 from the field. Mm-hmm. Dude, if you're just aggressive and shoot 24 times, 22 times when you're feeling it, I know the offense goes through book mm-hmm. and you get everybody else involved, but I just need him to be a little bit more aggressive, and it's hard to do that when you have a player like Zubak guarding you because he's a bigger dude, man, for <laughs> sure. The Suns win the series if what, Jeff? They stay the course. Stay the course. It's right there in front of you. And kind of the opposite of what you're saying. Mm. Feed Aiden. I think he's the matchup problem the Clippers, to me, can't solve. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, D-Book is D-Book. Chris Paul is Chris Paul. But Aiden has become a max player since the Lakers series. And he's developed into that. He's embracing the role. Give him the ball. And I promise you he'll make it easier on everybody else on that court. Mm. Suns win a series if, like you mentioned, Jeff, Aiden dominates the paint and if Bridges and Johnson are making shots. If they're making shots on the perimeter, you can go on and cancel it and go home because yeah. Chris Paul is going to get in the paint, kick. Devin Booker is going to get in the paint, kick. If you don't, he's going to score 
or is it going to throw it up to Aiden? So if Aiden is dominating the paint and Bridges and Johnson are making shots on the perimeter, they'll win this series for sure. Yeah. The Suns win this series if the guards reclaim their dominance, man. Booker and Paul combined to shoot 10 for 40 from the field. Very similar to what we saw with Chris Middleton in game one of the Hawks series. Six for 23 from the field. That, like my man Coach Locke has always said, the law of averages will come back. And Yeah, for sure. And if they can go into a situation where those guys come back playing, and I don't need Book to, you know, figure out a way to, you know, score 100 points. I just need him to do what he does, 25, 30 points on a consistent basis with that damn mask on. It's hard. You can't see. Hard to breathe. Yeah, it's you can't hard. breathe. Yeah. You can't see. He said he can't really see out his periphery. He said he called uh, Rip Hamilton to kind of yeah. learn some tricks in the trades with that. And it's tough, man, so. He broke his nose in three places, dude. Yes, like Pat Bell, somebody come on. Pat Bell gonna Pat Bell. Yeah, oh, he, he gonna find a way to muck up the game. <laughs> like is. you mentioned, the, yeah, the hey, dude, yeah. that's that's Pat what he's Bell. there for. Yeah. So if the guards continue to find their, you know, their spots, and I know CP's gonna figure it out. Absolutely. Mid range, mid range assassin, man. Two point geezer is what they call him. <laughs> Two point geezer. Um, the Clippers win the series, Jeff. If what? The Clippers have to continue throwing different bodies at D book. Because he's eventually going to figure out what Pat Bev is doing. You got to get Rondo on him a little bit. Mm. You got to get uh, Reggie Jackson just to, just to, just to show him a different look at time. Because eventually he's going to figure out all Pat Bev is going to do is get in my way. He's going to be messy. That's all he's going to do. Yeah. So the Clippers win if they keep being if they keep giving different looks to Booker. Somehow figure out a way to get. Paul George, 25 to 30 a game. Reggie Jackson, 15 to 22. And the Mark and the Morris twin, same thing. Yeah. It's a big if. It's a lot of ifs. It's a lot of ifs. Yeah. Or if it Kawhi, can happen, though. Or if Kawhi just comes back miraculously healthy. <laughs> it's, a whole, yeah, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Clippers win this series if Reggie Jackson plays well. He has to play out of his mind for the remainder of the series. If he doesn't play well, Paul George cannot do it by himself. He has to make those shots and bring that energy like he's been doing and did in the game that they just won. If he plays like that every game, they have a good, strong chance of winning this series. Yep. Mr. June is what they're calling Reggie Jackson. Right? Mm-hmm. He's been great. And if it goes never calling him. You know, for sure. never. <laughs> if he goes if it goes to game seven, so they gotta win in six. Because it goes to game seven to be July second. Yeah, so in so turn mm-hmm. Yeah, it's over with. So, so you can't, you know, so in turn I think he's gonna stay hot. But the only way that they would win this series is if Kawhi Leonard returns <laughs> at 100%. And that ain't happening. I just don't see I, – Reggie Jackson is going to Reggie Jackson like Eventually, he did the first yeah. two games. Eventually. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be a point where Paul George – listen, it's going Paul George. He's already done. And he's been he's doing well, man. He's he, no, no, again. Those free throws and again, hurt. That's and free again. Throw. Yeah, those free throws yeah, hurt. That was bad. Yeah, that was bad. That's that was bad. bad. You right. can't make one? Nah, man. One? He got – listen. PG, man – and yeah, but my guy, I'm a Paul George apologist. And then it gets to a point where you just got to cut your bait, you know. <laughs> and um, I've reached that point, Paul George. I don't really care anymore. You know, what and I'm you saying? know what? They were starting. They were taking back the play, the pandemic piece stuff. People were recanting their statements. And, and then the free up. throws happened. Yeah. Then the free throws happened. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you was quiet, Jeff. I was quiet. You was quiet about Paul George because he was hooping. I was happy. I was, yeah, you weren't really happy. No, nah, really it's happy. not true. Let me tell you something. It's Let me not tell you true. This is not true. We're in the trust tree. Okay. We're in the trust tree. Oh, and thousands of listeners. Yeah, with <laughs> thousands of listeners. We, this is, yeah, nobody's really listening. This is the trust tree <laughs> of listeners. Listen, you not listen. You would <laughs> listen. I don't want the Hawks to win, bro. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you. Now, I look at these guys and be like, Gotta be. Listen, listen. I don't want them to win. I listen. It's, Jeff, it's your face <laughs> when you come into the studio. Gracious. When the Hawks win, <laughs> Lord. This is the thing. I feel. I feel good about Buffalo because I've been a Buffalo supporter. Yeah. yeah. So in turn, it's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when Jimmy Garoppolo has a good game. It's the same face that you have. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yeah, I, mean, I told you. Like when you, when it's a prediction that Jeff has. And then this is the thing when he's wrong, quiet as hell. <laughs> but I'm quiet what do we do? Bring it up and say, well, I was wrong. It's just, yes. Be, that's what you want me to do. I said I was wrong about the. Uh, and then when I'm wrong, silence. radio silence. <laughs> Radio silence. You know, no, when I'm wrong, I'm quiet as hell. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm quiet as hell. Yeah. But Jeff, 
I don't want the Hawks to win. I'm just gonna keep it a bean with you. Keep it up. <laughs> but, I, but I'm not the one that's this hitting you up about the Hawks. Jeff, I hate you about Ben Simmons. Jeff. I hate you about it's, ben. it's all apart. It's about you, <laughs> you, it ain't funny no more it's in not, the Twitter. It, I almost blocked you, dude. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> had to block the cameraman before I was gonna block you. I had to. Lord. That was that was that was per- it was perfection. It was a joke. It was perfection. <laughs> I didn't block you. <laughs> <laughs> that man took offense to yeah, that. It was perfect. You, you left it right out there. Too. Yeah, I did. He was like, I got to say something negative about me. Huh? Yeah. That tweet is not alive. <laughs> I, I deleted that I tweet. <laughs> That's how mad I was. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, coach. Hey, man. Go on, man. Congratulations, though, coach. Not for us a bit. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Appreciate not it. For sure. Appreciate not it. For sure. We got to make a field trip to Houston. Man. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to stream the games, man. We start playing. Not for real. Please do. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Try to get your links. Watch yeah. the games. Link us. Link us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We yeah, show. man. You close things out with this manscape, man? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are. Jeff, Jay, have y'all tried your weed whacker yet? Pause that. You know what, coach? I don't have no hairs in my nose. So you don't have no need to try it. But I'm. Listen, I'm going to find a way. I don't have... I was... <laughs> never mind. That's <laughs> <laughs> about to go, uh, yeah, about, about to go about another way. Yeah. 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 I do. Yeah, I'm going to try this weekend. Okay. I'm going to come back. I'm going to okay. have a report next right. week. Have you tried to coach? No, I haven't tried Coach Lock is the Grizz. In my Listen. phone, he calls and says, the Grizz. Listen, man. <laughs> hey, shout out to Pops. Rest his soul. He blessed me with a lot of hair, buddy. Yeah, for sure. A lot of hair. So these are very needed tools. You got hair in your ears already? Yes. For real? Yes. Like right on the the outskirt, not yeah. inside, but like outskirt, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, damn. So, so y'all yeah, make man, sure you tried yours. You're a damn lie. You tried yeah. yours. How'd it work for you? You can't say that. <laughs> Two thumbs up, hey, that's, right. Yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So y'all make sure y'all go to manscaped.com and check out the weed whacker. Check out the lawnmower 4.0. Get you a little ball deodorant. Mm-hmm. Get you some ball revival. I got to try the ball deodorant. Hey, yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> try that. It. it works very well. God, Once you go to <laughs> manscaped.com, type in that code FSP20. Yeah. What is that going to do? It's going to get you 20% off and free shipping. Sure. And the shipping is pretty fast. Yeah, oh, it's going to get it there. Get it there. They're going to get it there. Get it there. They're going to get it to you. So, make sure y'all try that out. And what? Your balls will definitely thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. For sure. Messing up in the books, man. Watch these games, man. And watch them with hatred in your heart. That's <laughs> what I do. I watch these games with pure hatred. Whoa. When I see Trey Young coming off a screen, I say, knock his ass out. Damn. And then they don't. And, and then he do knocks that. it down. I don't say nothing it's about D book. I don't say nothing about D book. I haven't hit you about nothing with D book. I just. How do you not like D book, though? I think he. I think Trey Young is not a likable person. <laughs> John Collins is not a likable John person. John Collins is likable. No, no, he's not. Trey Young. I, I can see. I can honestly see somebody saying they don't like Trey. And I liked Trey Young, man. I was early on Trey Young. It's, it's, it's then, little man syndrome. And then he comes into these games and shoes are garbage. Why would you make a? Why would you create a low top sneaker and you have high top ankle braces on? I asked Steph Curry the same thing. No, he had highs on. Nah, his, Steph, his first couple of shoes were highs. Yeah, but now they low. And now they super low. Yeah. And he got the big ass ankle big braces. Ankle braces. Yeah, <laughs> Weak ass ankles, man. Yeah. For sure, that's my boy. He's a three star. But guess what? He's a champion. He's a, yeah. 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 He's, yeah. Yeah. Ruin the game. Well, you know why he's a three star? All right. They Uh-oh. said that they didn't. They did, no, nah, nothing, nothing bad. They said uh, back when he was in high school, he stayed in the high school he was supposed to play with. Mm. He didn't travel. He didn't do the, the big play, AAU tournaments or nothing mm. like that. He nah. stayed exactly where his school was. That's Dale fault. Dude. Yeah, it's just that's what I'm saying. So yeah, that's on, why man. that's why he was a three star because it was like yeah he put up numbers, but what would he do against? Come on, that's yeah. how he ended up at Davidson. Yeah. yeah. Cause think about it. Uh, Seth was at um, Liberty. Liberty before he went to Duke. Yeah, so he was. It makes sense. That's true. Yeah, I was bad parenting. Then. All right. <laughs> oh my Tweet us some questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the YouTube page. On the iTunes page, please rate and subscribe. And more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell a friend. Coach Lott. Get a drummer song. Jeff. Camera's always on, brother. Damn know it, man. The revolution will be podcast. The cameraman, we are out. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press Podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, please check out the YouTube page and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Don't forget, tell a friend to tell a friend. Revolution will be podcasted.